Loki Season 2 was something else, wasn't it? And, since you guys seem to like my pruning tutorial, let's keep the Loki train going. I did a poll to see what effect you'd like to see, and it was split right down the middle. You guys think you're funny, don't you? So I decided to go with the portal, and maybe I'll save the time slipping for another tutorial. So for this effect, you want to set your camera on a tripod and film two shots, a clean plate of the background without anything, and a shot of yourself pretending to walk out of a portal. Since I knew I was going to have to remove myself from the background, I had my mom and sister walk behind me holding a green screen. It didn't fully cover me though, so I still had to do some manual mask frame by frame by frame. How long would it take? Decades. S centuries. So yeah, if you have the studio version of Resolve, this would be a great time to use the magic mask. To make things easier, I went ahead and rendered that clip of just me. I set the format to QuickTime, set the codec to DNHR, and made sure export alpha was checked. So here in Fusion, I've got my two clips. I've got my background with nothing in it, and I've just got me walking without any background. And I'm actually gonna hit F2 and rename that to me, and do the same with the background. Always a good idea to stay organized. So right now, I start walking a little bit too soon. I want the portal to have time to fully open before I walk through it. So let's say I wanna come out around uh, frame 30. I can select me and bring the hold first frame to 30. Now I'm stuck in place until frame 30 when I start walking. Now let's make the portal itself. Thankfully in the show, the portal is a really simple shape, so we can actually make it just in Fusion. So we can bring down a shape 3D from this top bar right here, bring that to the screen. I'm gonna change that shape to a cube. Now to change its shape, I can uncheck lock width, height, and depth. Now I can move each dimension separately. So for the look we're going for, I can bring the width to 0.5 and the depth to 0.1. Now let's work on texturing it. In the show, it has a kind of grungy glass texture. So, I can bring down this grunge texture I got from pexels.com. I will link it in the description below. Bring that to the screen. Now for some reason it doesn't fill the whole screen, but that's easy enough to fix by adding a transform node. I'm just hitting shift space to bring up that toolbar there. And I'm just gonna bring up the size until it fills the whole screen. So right now this image is at a huge resolution. So I will add a resize node and that'll make it just a more manageable size. Then I can add a brightness contrast bring down the saturation, and then I just want to isolate the brightest parts of this image. So I'll play around with the gamma and the lift until I have more contrast in this. I'll check clip black just to make sure we aren't getting any values below zero in this. Now it also has these kind of glowing edges in the show. So to recreate that, I can bring down a background node, bring it up to the screen. I'm gonna change the color to white. Then I'm going to add a rectangle to that. I'm gonna check invert. Then I'm gonna bring the width and the height to one. So now it's taking out the whole screen so we can't see our background. But if we bring up the soft edge a little bit, now it's starting to bleed over into the background. We can also bring down the border width a little bit if you want. Now I will merge that over our brightness contrast and change that apply mode to screen. Now I can take that and plug that into our shape 3D there. Now in that shape 3D, we can see it's not quite sitting on the ground plane. So in the transform tab, I can bring the Y to 0.5. Now it's sitting right on the ground plane there. Make things easier for us. Now I can add a camera 3D, and that'll automatically make a merge 3D. I'll bring that to both screens. Then on this left one, I'm gonna right click on perspective and change that to camera 3D1. So now we're seeing what the camera is seeing on this left viewer. And that will make it easier for us to position the camera. I can also drag our footage into the camera 3D. So now we see it in the background of this. So I'm gonna use that to position the camera so that it lines up with our footage. Once that's lined up, we can disconnect the footage from the camera. Now we can move on to animating the portal. So in the shape 3D, I'll go to frame 30, and in the controls, set a keyframe on the width, height, and depth. Then I'll go back about 10 frames and bring down the height until it looks something like this. Then I'll go forward two frames and set a keyframe on the width and the depth. I want there to be some overlap in the animation, that's why I'm not putting them all on the same frame as the height keyframe. Then I'll go back to frame 10 and squeeze down the width until it looks something like this. I'll also set keyframes on the height and depth. Now I can go back one frame and bring everything down all the way. Now it's animating on. To make things a little bit smoother, I can go to the spline tab, click these three dots and make sure show only selected tool is selected and make sure I have my shape 3D selected. Now I can check this box, press this to make it fill the whole screen. Then I'm just gonna select all of these and hit F. That'll smooth out those curves. Now, I can go ahead and add a render 3D. In the output channels, I'm going to check vector, 
Then in the image tab, I'm gonna change the depth to float 16. So after that, I can go ahead and add a vector motion blur, just to add some motion blur to that, as the name implies. Now to add that orange color, I can add a color corrector and bring it to a nice kind of golden color. Then to add a bit of glow, I can search for a soft glow and bring up the glow size and bring up the threshold a little bit. Now we can merge that over our footage and change that apply mode to screen. So now we want it to look like it's blurring the background behind that. So for this, after our footage, we can use a node that you might not have used before called a prism blur. This lets us blur the background, but it also adds a bit of chromatic aberration, which we also see in the show. So I can bring the center to kind of where our portal is, bring up the blur strength, and the aberration distance. Now right now it's blurring the whole image, but we only want it to be blurring behind the portal. So I can drag out from our color corrector, plug that into this blue arrow of the prism blur. Now it's only happening behind the portal. Now since the sky in my footage is so bright, our portal is kind of getting lost in that. So to remedy that, I can add a brightness contrast, bring down the gain a little bit, and again, drag out from the color corrector and plug that into the mask input of that. Now right now I'm already standing there before the portal opens, so I can put the color corrector into the mask input of me. Now I'm only showing up where the portal is. Now because of the motion blur, you can kind of see me peeking through the edges, so I can select me, go to the settings, and just bring up the low slider in the alpha. Now I'm staying behind the portal. Now to make it look like I'm coming out of the portal, I can duplicate this footage of me, just control C, Control V, just paste it over here. Then I can merge that over everything. So I want me to start walking out of the portal, I think maybe frame 40. So we want to reveal this footage in a way that it looks like I'm emerging out of the portal. And we could do this with masks, but there's a way we can do it that's driven by the actual shape of the footage. So it looks more organic. So we can add an erode dilate. Make sure that's not connected between these two lines. Make sure it's off to the side. I can plug my footage into that. Bring that to the screen. I'm gonna change the filter to circle. Now if I bring down the amount, you can see it's kind of choking the edges of me. So I can bring down the amount to negative 0.04. Now I'm disappeared. Now this number may be different depending on your footage. So I'm gonna set a keyframe there and go maybe 20, 30 frames later and I'll bring it back to default. So now my shape is slowly emerging out of the thing. Now I am getting some frames where there's kind of transparency there. That's because I didn't get a perfect key when I keyed out my footage. You can see there's some holes in there. So to fix that, between these two things, I can add a matte control. Hold shift, I can drag that between these two nodes. Then I can just bring down this high slider until those holes disappear. Now we don't have that weird transparency issue. If you use the magic mask, I don't think you'll have this issue. Now right now our shape has some really jagged edges. So to make it look more organic, which is what we're going for, I can add another erode dilate. Then I'm gonna change the filter to circle again. And this time I'm gonna bring it up. And that just kind of rounds out the shape, makes it look more organic. Now to use this to cut out our footage, I can add a brightness contrast. Make sure it's between these two lines, not connected to these other things. I can plug our road dilate into the mask of that. Then in the settings, I'm gonna hit multiply by mask. Now it looks like I'm emerging out of the portal, but you can actually still see the blurred version of me behind me. So to fix that, in the merge, I can go to right before I come out of the portal, set a keyframe on the blend, go a few frames forward, bring that down all the way. And while we're here, I can set a keyframe right before I walk out. Set a keyframe there, then go a few frames back, and bring that down. So now it looks like I kind of appear behind the portal before I come out of it. I keep calling it a portal. Does it actually have a name? Huh. So in the show, whenever people come out of the time door, there's a kind of glowing outline around them. So to recreate that, we can add another erode dilate off to the side of this. We can plug our brightness contrast into that. Then we can bring down the amount a bit. Now we can copy and paste the brightness contrast, plug our original into that, then plug our new one into the mask input of that. Then I can check apply mask inverted. So now we have a kind of outline. I'm gonna bring in a background node, plug our outline into that. Then I'm gonna change the color to a kind of orange. Then I'm gonna add a blur. I'm just gonna bring up that size a little bit. Now I can merge that between these two merge nodes and set the apply mode to screen. Now to make it a bit brighter, I can add a color corrector and bring up the gain a little bit and maybe bring down the saturation a bit. Then in the merge, I'll go to the frame right before I finish coming out of the portal, set a keyframe on the blend, go a few frames forward, and bring that down. Now let's add a bit of interactive lighting to our wall. 
So I'm gonna add a color corrector, make sure it's before our portal. Then I'm gonna bring it to a kind of golden color and bring up the gain. Then I'm gonna add a polygon to that and kind of mask out a round shape around the floor where I want the glow to be. I can pull out while I'm drawing the handles to make them more curved. And then I wanna soft edge that a ton. Then I can add another polygon and this time I'm gonna draw a shape on the wall. And again, soft edge that a ton. And I think this one I wanna bring down the level a little bit so it's not as bright as the one on the floor. Now we can control the intensity of this by going to the settings and we have a blend slider here just like you would with the merge node. So I'm gonna go to right where the portal finishes opening, set a keyframe on the blend, then go back and bring the blend down to zero. So now it looks like it's lighting up the environment. Now if you wanna learn more Loki effects, then check out this video where I show you how to make the pruning effect.